Yo guys, what up? It's your boy DBK here, back with another one for you. And uh, yeah, what's up, man? Um, so basically, uh, the video I'm about to watch is the interview that I managed to conduct with Marv One. Shouts out to Marv One, and thanks for letting uh, letting me interview him. Just want to say shouts out to him. Now I've put this in because uh, I'd like to alert you guys before you watch the video that that uh, are problems with the audio. Now, um, I have no idea what happened, this hasn't ever happened to me before when I've been recording interviews and recording audio, but for some reason um, there was a progressively worse echo as the interview went on, and it became to the extent where like, uh, you know, the echo was uh, one minute, one second before you know it's it's like there's a one second gap between the audio and the echo so it sounds really out of sync and there's nothing that i can really do about it um i've looked at all ways which i could deal with it and there aren't any real ways i mean i've tried to subdue it as much as i can but i just thought i'd put a heads up that this uh you know the audio is it's kind of fucked but it doesn't take away from the fact that i did this interview so i want to say shouts out to you guys uh peeping this and um yeah sorry about it um i'm gonna make sure this don't happen in the future with future interviews um what can you do man what can you do sometimes technology fucks up on you so i'm, I'm sorry for the quality of the audio but the interview should still be fine and uh yeah enjoy man enjoy this all right guys what up it's your boy dbk here and uh with me i've got a legend of the battle scene a man who has battled over the last three decades <laughs> a man who has made his name uh, crushing several opponents if not you know maybe into the hundreds of people he's battled over his years in the battling industry straight out of Detroit I'm here with my man Marv One what's cracking? Man three decades how old do you think I am? I've been battling for three fucking decades Look, no over three decades I said over man like the, the, the decade that we're in now then the 2000s then the 90s Oh, okay, okay, okay. I get it. So, yeah, over all three. Right. Over, don't worry. You, you, nah, I'm not saying you're like that, bro. It's okay. So, it's, it's, yeah, yo, yo, that's a bit crazy, man. That's a bit crazy. <laughs> but <laughs> how you doing, man? How you doing? What's uh, what's going on with you? What's going on with you? I'm blessed, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing really well. You know? Mm -hmm. Glad to be here. Glad to still still be relevant. So, yeah. You know, that's the, that's the big thing. Yep, and relevant you have been for many years now, you know, people, well, I mean, I've known you for a long time, you know, I remember, I mean, I think the first battle I ever watched with you was you versus Nems. Um, yeah, man, stop, stop ne Nems, is, Nems is my boy, you know, uh, Coney Allen, you know, FYL president, and mm -hmm. uh, that was that was the first time I saw you, and uh, I believe you were at home for that battle. And you know the crowd was crazy. You know the crowd loved it. The crowd ate it up. It was it was mad love and mad respect in that battle. And yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Nims, Nims is like my actual my actual friend. Man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, so. yeah. I mean that that was the first time I saw you. And then and then I looked on to you know seeing that you did stuff like Fight Club, seeing that you did stuff like uh, the jump off two on twos, which was mm -hmm. another one where you know you and Quest fucking ripped shit. You know, um, yeah. and then I mean, you just blew up. You know, you just really blew up. I mean, I, I wanna, I wanna find out first. How did you really get into like hip hop, and what was your roots in hip hop like? How did it start out? Um, well, actually, I don't have, I don't have any older, I don't have any older blood siblings. So uh, my older cousin Chuck basically uh, became, you know, he was like a surrogate big brother for me, and. Uh, Everything that he did, you know what I'm saying, I wanted to do. So okay. he was in, you know, he was in a, he basically molded me as, as far as hip hop. You know, he played me, you know, fucking Boogie Down Productions on, on a fucking, on a Gray Max L tape. He went and bought, I went with him when he bought Great Adventures of Slick Rick, like as a kid. Like, so right, right. he was my, he was my biggest influence, you know what I'm saying, in my early stages. And then, you know, you play around in high school, I mean, in middle school and high school, and uh, my, uh, a dude who you know basically became like my older brother, my man, uh, my man Dale. He uh, he was rapping in the neighborhood, and you know, I saw the attention he was getting, so you know, I basically uh, I tried to I tried to become him, 
and you know he kind of took me under his wing and taught me what he knew and it just kind of it just kind of grew from there so like i've been i've been deeply rooted into it for years you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so that's it you know running around and 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 of course it's it's you know when you're a kid that's that's 14 13 14 and you can rap pretty well you're like a fucking you're like a circus act so i was running around battling all these old ass grown men and you know kicking their asses and you know this is down a third so that's kind of how that's kind of how i got my start you know what i'm saying and and battling and and and, and, and hip-hop in general so um what was it like growing up in detroit I mean, it's just like any, it's, it's, it's like any other uh, major urban city, you know, as a kid, you don't, you don't necessarily see, you don't see the fucked up shit that's going on around you, mm -hmm. you know, you just, you see, you know, you a kid, like if you see a, a fucking vacant lot, you don't necessarily see, you know, you don't see how that negatively affects the neighborhood, you just see a place where you and your friends can go play football, or, you know, where you and your friends can fucking put a mattress there and flip, so it, it was it was it was cool, you know. It did teach me, it did teach me to be aware of my surroundings because you know I, I've lost a lot of people, and uh, it's 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 just like any other city, you know. It's no different from Chicago. It's no different from Philadelphia. It's no different from fucking London or you know whatever the case may be. Yeah, yeah. Battling. When did you start to take battling seriously? Um, seriously, probably when I was around 16 or 17. Okay. Probably when I was around 16 or 17. Um, I, I've always been, in in my mind at least, I've always been a witty dude. Mm -hmm. So, I've kind of always been really good with like playing the dozens and your mama jokes and shit like that. And you know, because you know, because I've always been overweight. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, that's always. Like, like that's, that's that's always been the fucking first thing people go for. So I kind of I kind of started taking it serious when I was around 16 or 17, and um, I've been I've been battling like literally ever since. Like I really like I've literally had hundreds of battles. You know what I'm saying? Like people talk like you know every MC that's around my age or came from my era, like before camera. We literally have hundreds of battles. Like you know, like people would call you. You'd have to go to somebody else's neighborhood or somebody else's school or somebody would come to your place and challenge you. Like we have a, like we have hundreds of battles. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I got started. I got started. I, I took it serious when I was like 16 or 17, maybe. All right. And uh, when you started battling, were the majority of the battles freestyles, or would you come up with some stuff that you had pre-written beforehand? They were all. They were all. Uh, they were all freestyle when I first started. Okay. They were, they were all. They were all first. They were. I mean, they were all freestyles when I first started. It was like really taboo to uh, to come in with a written verse when I started. Okay. But then, you know, the climate changed, and you know, you got to adapt. So, um, what would you consider your first notable battle where people you know after that battle or something people started recognizing you and you started gaining a name for yourself mm, maybe 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 mtv okay i did the very first uh mtv battle the very first mtv mc battle mm -hmm. and uh i was one of the semi-finalists and uh, that got me a lot of notoriety. That got me a lot of that got me a lot of looks. So I probably say that one. All right, okay. Um, I want to talk about Eight Mile now. Now, this was something that I only really discovered in the last couple of years. I was just flicking through some archive videos on YouTube, and I found that um, in some of the deleted scenes or the extra scenes of Eight Mile, you actually battled Eminem. How did that come about? Um. It came about they were uh, all of the people, all of the extras that were in that movie. We were all we were all local rappers, so you know. And I guess in order to keep the morale up or you know keep people keep people interested, they decided that they were going to do you know basically a rap off, you know, contest for all the people in the crowd, and 
you know, uh, they would pick three people and there would be, like, you would have a chance to be in some B-roll footage. You wouldn't have any lines. Like, you know, there was no guarantee that you would make the movie. And, um, you know, it was just basically for you to get some type of look. So, you know, I did that. I was one of the four people they picked. They ended up picking four people. I was one of the four they picked. They told us, the director told us basically, like, hey, like, this is, like, get up here and rap. You have to make it look as authentic as possible. I went up there and I just spit a verse. It wasn't it wasn't a verse that I had written spe- that I had, that I had wrote specifically for him. It was just a verse that I had, okay. and uh, you know, it just he 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 felt I got too much reaction, and you know, the 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 MC in him wouldn't allow wouldn't allow me to 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 have that look. So you know, he he turned his mic on and did what MCs do. It's cool. What was it like uh, being on set um, and being around, you know, famous people such as actors, famous rappers? I mean, Eminem himself. What was it like being around um, these guys here? I've never, I've never been starstruck though. Like, so it didn't really, it didn't really make, it didn't really make a big difference to me. I've never been starstruck. You know what I'm saying? I, I appreciate people's craft and and what they do, but I've never been starstruck. So. In terms of influences, who would you cite as an influence that molded the way that you rap today? And like, basically, who who would you cite as a major influence on your style? Um. Well, I guess on a on a national scale, it would probably be a Big Daddy Kane. Okay. But you know, I took a lot of I took a lot of personal influences. Uh, like I learned from a lot of people. My man Proof. You know what I'm saying? RP, my RIP. man Dale, who taught me a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? My bro Fats. Like, a lot of, I, t- I take more from people around me than I do from these quote unquote uh, stars or things like that. Okay. So it's more so people around me. All right. So, um, growing up, what kind of uh, music did you listen to? Was it always hip hop or were there other music types or genres being played around you whilst growing up? Nah, I'm, I'm I'm not even gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna give you some deep ass answer like, oh man, you, oh, man, you know I was listening to opera. Like I, that's all I listened to is rap. Okay. Like honestly, growing up, all I listened to was hip hop. I wanted to know, I wanted to know what the what the next big line was gonna be or what the next big beat was gonna be. So I was I was always listening to hip hop. I enjoyed other forms of music, but for me, hip hop was it. So um, moving on into uh, the kind of deeper side of battle and how did you uh get in touch with jump off and how did uh you and the two on twos and with quest mccody how did that come about how did you two team up and how did you guys get involved with jump off as a whole um that's actually that's actually all quest okay you know know what i'm saying quest um i didn't know anything about about, i didn't know anything about jump off you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying so Basically, basically an opportunity came up but it was like yo you can win fifty thousand dollars at that point that was fucking huge for rap right. you know what i'm saying yeah so uh quest hit me up and uh that i mean that's really it like there was no big grand scheme behind it he hit me up and was like yo nigga do you want to win 50 bands i was like of course so then, you know, we made it happen. We made it happen. You know what I'm saying? We hit the jump off people. You know what I'm saying? They had knew of me. They knew him. So they were super excited. Okay. And uh, yeah. that was it. That was it. We got you know. We st- excuse me. Then we start steamrolling over niggas and they robbed us. You two were definitely one of the standout pairs from uh, the WRCs. What did it feel like not being able to win in the end? I mean, how, how do you feel? I know you said you got robbed, but how, I mean, how do you think that like went down the decision? You know, at the time, what what do you think happened? I mean, what shit, I mean, what shit it was it was terrible because we you invested so much time into these things. There was so many people and long ass days and long ass nights. And you arguing with your girl because you're not spending time with her because you fucking going with strategies for niggas that you might not ever battle. Like so at that point it was, although the money was 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 the catalyst. You know what I'm saying for for me being upset. It was more so at the time. Like yo, you like you like 
basically you basically robbed me of my time. Like if I if I, if I had known that this was going to be the outcome, I would have never, never got involved. You know. You mm -hmm. know. So that was that, so that was, was that was that was more upsetting than anything else. Like yo, know, like how you gonna play me? How you gonna play me on my fucking time? Like I'm a busy person, and you took months out of my life to say ah. Eh, well, I want this person to win. But well, nigga, you should have told me that from jump, and I wouldn't have done it. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. It must have been, you know, incredibly disappointing to have, you know, like you said, put in that amount of time and that amount of effort. And you know, I mean, did they give any runner-up prizes or did they give anything in uh, in terms of monetary f uh, prizes for you guys? You know, you know, I want to say they did. I want to say like, uh, I want to, but I want to say it was like something like super duper, like fucking small. You know what I'm saying? Basically, it's just like, hey, here's you know, here, here's enough money to eat while you're in New York. Enjoy. It was kind of something like that. It wasn't. It wasn't anything that would have made me content. Um, after that, uh, how, how was your feelings or opinions on terms of battling with these big companies? No, I, I was done with battling. Period. I didn't battle for two. I didn't battle for two, I didn't battle for two years after Jump Off. Whoa. I didn't battle for two years. I, I was done. I was like, you know what? Fuck this shit. I'm straight. This is it's become a circus. I'm cool. I'm cool. Uh, you know wow. what I'm saying? So, so the Jump Off situation really put you off battling. Yeah, yeah, I was done. I was completely done. Like I didn't watch any battles. Like I didn't go to any battles. I didn't do anything. Because I, I I knew it was I knew it was a circus. It had become a circus at that point. Whoa. I, I, was, I, I was I was I was over it. Wow. Okay. All right. Um. So grind time. Do you remember your first battle on grind time? Uh, I do actually. My first battle was uh, uh, Aver. Uh, battle yeah. of the Bay. Battle of the Bay Five. Mm -hmm. Aver. Battle of the Bay Five. I believe. Instant yeah. classic. How did that come yeah. about? Um, you know, a direct has always been a really big supporter of uh of me back of me back. Probably he, he probably more so than you know he believed in me more so than I did at the time. So uh, so uh, either him or Lush reached out and was like, "Yo, man, it would be this is the biggest battle like to date." And at that time, Battle of the Bay Five was the biggest battle event like that had ever happened. So um, so um, it was like, "Yo, it was like, yo." We got, like, we really want you to come back, blah, blah, blah. You know, everybody wants you to come back. We got this kid from St. Louis, you know what I'm saying, that we're trying to get out here. We think he'd be really good. We think he'd be a really good matchup for you. And I, like I said, I had stopped watching battles. So I didn't, I had no idea who Verb was. And, uh, you know, I watched him. I thought he was dope. You know, every battler quits, but no battler ever loses the edge. You know what I'm saying? Like, you still, like, you still, like, you still want to do it. So, you know, I pump, I, pump I, I pump myself up and, you know, Verb, you know, is, a Verb is a great shit talker. So, you know, <laughs> we, um, we, uh, we had a couple conversations and, uh, you know, he kind of lit a fire under me. So I accepted the battle. You know what I'm saying? We came to, we came to open. I was very, I was very nervous. I was super nervous because I didn't know how I would be accepted in, um, in this new format. But you, know, I think but you know, I think I think we put on. I think we had a really fucking incredible match. You know what I'm saying? I tell people, I tell people that I caught Verb before he learned how to put on a show. You know what I'm saying? So I hope he took some of that from me because I felt you know that you know I put I put on a show out there. That was my big thing. So so I tell people that all the time. I called him. I called him before he became what he is. Which is cool with me. Which is cool with me. You know, I don't have any problem. I'm the paper champ. I'll take I'll take it any way it comes, you know what I'm saying? No homo. <laughs> okay. Um I'm guessing you think you won that battle clearly then. Um I mean, well of course yeah, of course I do. But you know, I'm quite sure he feels you know, the exact same way. So as long as people still watch it. I think it got maybe like six hundred thousand views or like a half million views. Which is cool with me, you know what I'm saying? As long you know as long you know, people like it. So as long as people like it, I love it. I'm I love it. All right. So after that battle, um, were you sort of back in the mood for getting into the new format of battling that was uh, appearing through? Yeah, I was. I was. I was very interested. I was really interested. You know what I'm saying? Like, it seemed. It seemed. It seemed a little bit. Seemed a little bit easier to do. 
Okay. So, so okay. it seemed, you know, it seemed, it seemed, uh, it seemed a lot easier to do than knowing, you know, what I'm saying, not knowing who your opponent is, or, you know. So I was really interested. I was really. That's good. That's good. Okay. All right. So, URL. Who was your first battle on URL against? My only URL battle was against Cortez. Cortez. My only URL, my only URL battle was it was against Cortez, and uh, and uh, we had had we had had some bad blood prior to that. So that's so that's what made that battle. You know what I'm saying? Probably my favorite. Probably my favorite. You know what I'm saying? Cortez did his thing. You know what I'm saying? He's a he's a staple. He's an, he's he's one of the most consistent guys. But at that time, I just did not like him. I didn't like him. And um, you know, you know, it was supposed to happen. It was supposed to happen on on grind time actually. And uh, you know, for whatever reason, it it didn't. And that fucked up some of my money. And that made me dislike him even more. So so. You know when it was, you know when 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 Smack and Beasley and and, and Norbs and Chico, you know, approached me with it. I was I was game. I was I was I wanted it. Like it didn't matter where he and I battled. At. Like it didn't matter where we battled. At. We could have battled in a fucking junkyard with four people. I wanted that battle. And uh, you know, Cortez did his thing. I think I got that one. I think I got that one easy. All right, all right. I think I got that one easy. But you know, it's a lot of people who disagree. And like I said, you know, as long as people, as long as people like, the like the fucking battle, that's it, man. It's all about footage. When it, once you learn that that fucking wins or losses don't necessarily count as much as they used to, and it's all it's more so about the show. Once you're once once you're able to put on a good show, you know what I'm saying? That 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 stands the test of time. You'll under you'll under you. It's easy to transition. I think I think that might have been the battle where I transitioned from. It's not about wins or losses. It's about you know what I'm saying, just putting on something that people that people can go back and watch over and over. Sure. All right. So, um, do you remember what it was about Cortez that you didn't quite like? Um, I don't actually. It was so long ago, and that's actually my man, right? You know what I'm saying? So you're cool with him now. I got a lot. Yeah, yeah, I got a lot of love for Cortez. That's my that's my man. That's great. That's great. It was it was it was probably something petty. You know, MTs dislike each other over petty shit. So. Some All right, so your battle with Math Hoffer. Uh, Do you remember uh, how that came about? Uh, it came about. Uh, Math had just lost to Cal like a year, like a year mm. before. And uh, I'll tell you, it's it's funny how karma works. It's funny how karma works because uh, right before that battle, I believe he lost somebody. Like I believe like he lost like a family member okay. or something. And you, can see that and you can see that that affected that affected his performance. So uh, Poison Pen hit me up. Shout out to my man Pen, Team Homie. My man Pen hit me up and asked me uh, if I wanted to battle for him. I said who? He said, Oh well, you know, I got math right now. I said, Well, yeah, fuck it. That's cool. You know, I'll cook math. Um, set it up, wrote, and uh, right before that battle, I lost somebody super close to me, like in a terrible fucking way. So, so. It, it, affected it, it affected the way I performed. Like I wasn't, like I wasn't like there. I like I like I just like right before I got like right before I got on the plane to come to New York. I fucking I was at a funeral. I was at a closed casket funeral. You know what I'm saying? So like it really like it really it really kind of fucked me up. And uh, but this is no excuse. Math math came back to do his numbers. You know what I'm saying? Math really really did his numbers. And uh, that you know that's that you know that's you know I I took that L. I took that L. I don't have any problem admitting that one. You know what I'm saying? He was on. I wasn't. I do think I had some really slept on material in that battle. I think I think a lot of those bars were really incredible in that battle, but there was nothing behind them. I just didn't. I didn't care. You know what I'm saying? And I wish I had canceled the battle, but it's a learning experience. You know what I'm saying? Um, do you think that crowds? have a bigger effect on the way that battles perform whether they're home or away or a crowd that's more favorable to them do you think that the crowds determine a lot of what goes on in battles nowadays i mean well, i mean well, i mean they've always they've always determined they've always you always know you have to you have to rap for your crowd 
Like you know, you gotta like you got to rap for the people that, that are in front of you. You got to know if you're going to if you're going to to a, a scribble jam type battle, you can't be the toughest nigga on stage because it doesn't it that's not going to resonate with them. You know what I'm saying? You got to you, you, you have to you have to know your crowd. And if you don't, then that's not the crowd's fault. That's your fault for not adapting because these are the people that are paying to see the show. So they're ultimately they're ultimately the judge. Mm. So, so, of course they do, but they're supposed to. Fuck it. Yeah, because I mean, I remember in the earlier days of grind time when a lot of people uh, had this thing about smack rappers and grind time rappers, and how people would say how smack rappers wouldn't really adjust to the grind time stage, and you know, would you know take L's in the battles because you know they were spitting material that was made for a smack crowd, but not for a grind time crowd. That's corny though. That's corny though. Because if you can rap, you can mm. rap. You know what I'm saying? Hollow never changed his style, and he was one of the most people. He's one of the most popular people in Grind Time, and he became one of the most popular people, if not the most popular rapper. Conceited was one of the most popular people in Grind Time, and he became a fucking, a fucking juggernaut over at your over at Smack. So that's cornball. If you can rap, you can rap. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never respected that. I never respected that argument. Like that's corn. Some people like what they like, but you can't. But you can't deny talent. Like, you can rap. Like, if you can rap, you can fucking rap. I agree, man. I agree. I think uh, sometimes people just, you know, close their ears and don't listen to someone just because of a couple bars or something. And, you know, that you can't really do that nowadays because, you know, it's it's a lot more complex than that. It's a lot more complex than that. Um, yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Math Hoffer. Um, he, well, in the last couple of years a few things haven't been too, you know, rosy on his side of the things. Do you see him coming back into battling? Or, yeah. I mean... Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah I mean, the game needs mm. math. I think, you know, rap, rap. People, people front. At one point in time, and math was the biggest draw in fucking battle rap. Math was the biggest fucking draw. He was the top dog, no question. And, you know, people front on that. You know what I'm saying? And since he, you know, since he 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 hasn't been in in the limelight as much, you know, I, I think it's suffered. I think a lot of people have been able to get away with basically taking his persona. You know what I'm saying? And becoming, you know what I'm saying, the tough guy or you know whatever the case may be. So there's 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 never anything like the original. There's never anything like like the authentic article. So there'll always be a place for math and battle. You know what I'm saying? I I think he'll come back and he'll be you know just as popular as he once was. All right. Um. What do you think of rematches in battle? And would you ever rematch someone that you battled in the past? Well, I actually, I, yeah, I want to rematch math. I actually want to rematch math, and I want that to be my very last oh. battle. You know what I'm saying? I do want I do want to rematch man. I do think if there if there are extenuating circumstances, if it's things that, you know, affect your performance or affect whatever the case may be, I do think, you know I I, I do think, you know, a rematch is, is is a good look. I'm not for it all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't think battlers should be having fucking trilogies, you know what I'm saying? Three, four, four fucking battles. But you know, if, and, and it just depends on if the fans want to see it. That's all. All right. So your very last battle. Are you planning on leaving battling soon? Um. Well, you know, I always toy with the idea. I'm on an upswing right now, so I might just fucking quit right now while people still love me. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, for some reason, the fans love to hate me. They love to hate me. And right now, they love me. So I might just leave right now and say fuck it. <laughs> Well, I mean, I think that you're probably one of the most respected battlers in history. So, you know, I, yeah, 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 I, res I, mean, I respect that. That mean that actually means a lot. That means a lot. That means a lot more than you know any fly by night fan. You know what I'm saying? So, I I, yeah, I think that. I think most people recognize you know that you have to give respect where respect's due, and I think a lot of fans recognize that you deserve your respect for the time the effort uh, over the years which you've put into battling and you know one of the people that actually helped battling get to the stage just at now you know one of the people that pushed battling yeah, yeah man you know, yeah, man, you know i'm never i've never been a person to toot my own horn man you know it's just like you know some people see it they see it if they don't they don't but the only thing i say is you know just respect the time a nigga put in you know what i'm saying like i'm not i'm not i'm not a rinky dink i'm not a rinky dink nigga you know what i'm saying i'm not a fly by night nigga i've been here I've been here, nigga. I did MTV. I did fucking. 
I was on the first fucking battle rap reality show. I fucking, I was the first nigga battling in HD. I was the first nigga battling where you had to pay to see his battle online. Me and Quest changed two and two battling. Like yo, give me like this, and I'm still here. Like give me, like just give me that. If you don't, if you don't rock with me, you don't gotta rock with me. But just respect the time a nigga put in. You know what I'm saying? That's all. I feel that. All right, man. KOTD, uh, Canada's premier battle league. What was your first battle on KOTD? Mm-hmm. First battle on KLTD was Lo Pesci. Shout out to Lo Pesci. It was my, it was Shout my first out to Lo Pesci. Um, how did that battle come about? Um, me bug. I think it was me bugging uh, organic. Like oh shit. Like oh shit. Like I want to get over there. It's, it's only a, a four hour drive. And uh, Pesci, you know Pesci, is the gatekeeper for you know what I'm saying for for fucking KLTD. People don't give him his credit, man. But Pesci is really, really fucking incredible. And then you know, of course, in that battle, of course, the incident happened, course, the incident happened with Pat, which led up to me and Pat battling. So, uh, you know, it it, it it was a good battle. Me and Pesci was a good battle. Yeah, I was about to get onto your battle with Pat Stay. So, seeing as you brought it up, uh, I'm I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with the incident that happened, where Pat reacted to a line from you. Um, mm. Did you did you really have any plans of battling Pat before that, or was that something that kind of sparked the little rivalry between you two? No, you know, at, at, you know, Pat Pat was actually my man at that at that at that time. He was actually my man. I thought that I thought that he was he's the Hulk Hogan of KOTD. He's the, you know what I'm saying. He's the star. So I mean, you gotta take. I mean, as 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 a competitor, you gotta take a jab at the top dog. He's the top dog over there. But it wasn't a disrespectful. It wasn't a disrespectful line. It just so happens that you know he had had a little liquor in him, and you know when you when you mix liquor, his liquor and my ego, you know what I'm saying? It it just exploded into something else. That's all. But you know, but you know, then you know when he and I battled, it was really intense because of you know what I'm saying? Some things that were said, and you know, some things that were insinuated. Some. I'm, in a way, I'm glad that it happened because it made our battle mm. classic. You know what I'm saying? It made our battle. It wasn't a. It wasn't a ticky tack. Oh, we're two friends here for a check type of battle. Like it was. Like it was. It was a real fucking battle. You know what I'm saying? And I think. You know what I'm saying? He 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 proved. He proved that you know. He proved that there are no lines. He proved that there are no lines. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to battling. You know, I'm, I'm glad. You know, I'm, I'm glad. You know what I'm saying? That I was able to be mature enough to combat it. And I won. I, and I won that fucking battle. <laughs> I won that fucking battle, bro. You know what I'm saying? And, and it wasn't because of. It wasn't because people didn't like his anger. His first round was incredible. His first round was maybe the hardest hitting round in battle rap history. I can't front him. I took the second and third. I took the second and third clearly. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But that's my man now, though. You know what I'm saying? We, we, too we cool? spoke. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you know, we hashed it out like men. You know, I'm not a sensitive nigga. You know, so. You know, we, we talked it out. You know, it's my man. I wish him all the best. He is the champ. I should be the champ, though. You know what I'm saying? I beat him. I'm with the fucking champ. Um, One thing that, during that battle between you and Pat Stay, one thing that, like, kind of really got me is how you held uh, your comp composure during that battle like some of the stuff that was said for me you know even just watching it as a fan that was just top tier disrespectful shit like how did you manage to keep you know keep your cool and to, you know just take it on the chin everything that was said because i mean i think that was one of the most impressive elements of that battle you know when he was saying extremely disrespectful shit about family and stuff about proof and stuff i mean how did you how did you hold it together really I mean, this is my job. I was supposed to. I've always, I've always, I've always come from, I've, I come from the era, I always come from the school of thought that if you allow your opponent to see that his words are affecting you, he's already won. So it's kind of like, that's just like when people be talking or talking through people's, like through their opponent's rounds or, you know what I'm saying, shit like that. Like, I think, I think that's all corny. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It shows. It shows that you fucking don't have any any composure. So you know, 
Like, fuck it, you know. I was working. That's what it was. All right. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no big. It, it, ain't no big, it wasn't. It, it was. It was. It was hurtful at the time. But then what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pop off on him and then ruin the battle and then look like a sensitive nigga who can't get booked no more. Nah. That's not it. I'll, I'll give you enough rope to hang yourself. Hmm, that's a good point, actually. You know, um, and that brings me on to my next one. Um, I brought it up earlier, the math of a disaster incident. Um, obviously, it was a kind of ugly day for Batlin. Um, and, if, you know, a little while ago, there were rumors surfacing of them wanting to engage in a boxing match away from Batlin to try and sort out their, you know, issues. What, what would you, I mean, what's your opinion on that type of thing happening? Uh, I mean, like, don't, don't, I mean, like, don't, don't be. I feel like if you, if you, if you're gonna do, you don't do street shit in front of a camera. You know what I'm saying? Like, at some point, at some point, like, you know, you don't, you don't have to exploit the bullshit. Like, if y'all, like, if y'all want to throw hands, throw hands. Y'all both grown men. You're, you're entitled to throw hands. You know what I'm saying? But don't. Don't do it. Strictly Don't do it strictly for a camera. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, I know both of those dudes personally. I know that they're both, you know what I'm saying? Stand up dudes. So, you know, if that's what it takes in order to, 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 to kill the situation, then you know, then you know, you go in a small room and you, you go until only one of y'all walk out. You know, that's it. But don't like don't do it for a camera, man. Like don't give don't give don't give don't give people don't give people who don't know our culture any more reason to think that we're all fucking savages or you know, whatever the case may be. Um Marv One. Where did you come up with that name? How I mean, how did you create your pseudonym in Balan? Um actually because uh, I didn't I didn't have a rap name when I first started Balan. I was just going by Marv and uh, uh uh, locally, I was winning a lot of battles. So uh, the question would always be, uh, like, uh, like who won the battle? And they would always say, "Well, shit, Marv won." <laughs> and uh, my man Cobb, my man Cobb, uh, R.I.P. He was like, "Yo, that should be your name, like Marv won." I'm like, "Like the number?" And he's like, "No, like you won, like you're the winner, like because you win all these battles." And you know, it kind of stuck. Um, you battled Head Ice. Battle Head Ice. Oh, shit, yeah. I that. <laughs> Do you remember how that battle came about? Because Head Ice is one of my favorite, personal favorites. You know, I just, I love his style. Do you, do you kind of remember how that came up? Well, me and, well, me and Ice had always, people compare me and Ice a lot because of our, uh, because of our, mm. our, our styles, which isn't, which isn't really rapid fire, which is more, you know, talk to a nigga. And, uh, People, people, you know what I'm saying? That battle happened in, 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 the, in the makings for years. You know, it's, it's, it's and uh, my man uh, Tank from, uh, I believe the name of the league is Loudmouth out of Minnesota. You know what I'm saying? He hit us up and, you know, he, he you know what I'm saying? He threw us a, a, a nice little dollar amount. I wish, I wish that we had saved that battle for a different time. Or maybe, a different platform. or maybe a different platform, you know what I'm saying? Because it was lackluster. It was lackluster. It was lackluster. You know what I'm saying? And it could have been something incredible, in my eyes. And you know, it just it just doesn't it just doesn't have it just doesn't have the pop that I thought it should have. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Do you believe a URL format would have been better for that? I don't know because you are really does I don't know. Like I, I I think like me and Ice needed a small room. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not we're not a that's not a big stage battle. That's not a summer madness type battle. Okay. That's that's for people who truly understand, you know what I'm saying, what we do and they appreciate it. So a small room would have been would have been really dope for that. Alright. So um you mentioned that people compare you and Head Ice uh, because your styles. I mean, what inspired your style? I mean, is, everyone knows your style as being real laid back, but hard hitting with punches. How how did that? You know, how did you develop your style? To you know, was it something that you used to differentiate yourself from other people at the time? Nah, it's just, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I've never been a rapid fire rapper. Like that's never been my thing. I respect people who can do it, but I would. I, I kind of feel like when, you do, when you're a rapid fire rapper, like da 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 da. da you get away with you, you get away with you you can get away with not saying mm. shit you know what i'm saying 
I, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I want people to hear, every, like word people to hear every word because every every word, every, every word line, and every line and every fucking stanza means something. Like it, it play, means something. Like it play. Like it play, it, all like it, it, it all builds up to this. Like to the boom. That's so that's it's just always, always been my thing. I've never been I've never been a fucking like tongue twisting like rapid fire rapper. I wanna I wanna hit you. I want I want you to feel these lines. So I'm gonna make sure you hear. Them. So that's why you know. That's why it's, a class it's you know it's a class of us. It's like me. It's like Swave Sever. It's like Head Ice. It's like Good. It's like we rap like that. Like yo, like yo, you're gonna hear every fucking line. And you you know what I'm saying? Like that's just how we do. Oh, I I I I uh, actually appreciate that fact that you want people to actually hear your bars because I mean there've been you know times in the past where battlers have just been spitting so fast and you know some of the stuff goes over people's heads and when you look back at it some of the stuff they said don't even make sense. Um, so yeah, I, I understand that. Lot of Zay was a battle that you had on KOTD. Um, yes. How did that come about? How did that one come about? Because I mean uh, I wouldn't really envision you. Battling Lot of Zay. So, I mean, how did that one come up? How did the Lot of Zay battle come about? The Lot of Zay battle came about because uh, I kind of saw, I kind of saw, I kind of saw people turning, I kind of saw people turning on me after that fucking, after that total slaughter shit. So, I was actually, I was actually just slated to host Duel of the Desert. I was going to be one of the hosts. And, uh, my man Teddy Grizzle, the, it. the dude who uh, threw it, he, uh, hit, me up. he uh, hit me up and was like, well, shit, you know, what you think about battling? And I was like, well, who? He said, he said Zay, and it was like, shit, Zay ain't no slouch, but this is kind of what I need, you know what I'm saying, to to get me back, to kind of get me back in a space where I need to be. So that's how that came about, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was because I think that a lot of Zay is probably the most underrated nigga battling, and people don't give him enough credit, and I knew it would be a challenge. It wouldn't be easy. Okay, that's cool. Um, you were talking of Total Slaughter, the um, reality series. Uh, how did that? You know, how did you get approached for that? Because that's 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 a big thing. You know, that was like the first thing oh, shit. Oh. Um, that ever really popped off for battling on TV. Wise, how did uh, how did Total Slaughter come about for you? I keep I keep it funky. I got approached because a lot of people turned it down. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people turned it down, so they were just going down the list. And when it got to my name on the list, I was like, well, you know, I'm not doing shit else. It's a good look. Fuck it. But a lot of people turned it down. That's how. That's how I got. That's how I got my. You know what I'm saying? That's how I got my spot on Total Slaughter. It wasn't. It wasn't because I'm cool with Royce. It wasn't because I have some type of type of relationship with them. And them. It was because a lot of you know these top tier rappers. You know what I'm saying? They felt that it wouldn't have been a good look for them, and they declined. So that's how I ended up. So that's how I ended up. Okay. On. Um, what did you think of Total Slaughter? Did you think it was a good look in the end? Yeah, I think I think it was a good look. You know what I'm saying? Anything anything that brings battle rap culture to the forefront is a good look, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Now, it showed that it showed that we are regular people. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no fucking fights in the house. It, what no shootouts in the house. It shows, you know, that we take our craft very serious and that this is an art form. You know? And it showed that we can coexist with each other and and, and, and do this on a big on a, on, a, on a big fucking stage. So I was very I, I, I was super happy. I, mean, I was super happy with the people that they picked. You know what I'm saying? I thought it was I thought it was just the, the right the right you know what I'm saying, the right the right mix. Okay. And I hope you know. I hope they do. And I hope you know. I hope part. they do. I hope they do a part two with even more people. Yeah, so you'd be uh, open to jumping back on Total Slaughter if it came and hit screens again. Me personally, probably not. Me, I would. I probably wouldn't do the show. I wouldn't do the show again. I would. I would like to oversee it or like maybe you know pick some talent. But I don't think I would do it again. But I would love. I would love for for someone else to have the opportunity to experience that. Okay. Would you do a Total Slaughter event? Yeah, I would do a Total Slaughter event. No question. Okay. All right. Um. So recently, your battle with Charlie Clips dropped on Rap Grid. Uh, how did that battle with Clips come about? Because Clips right now is uh, he falls into a lot of people's top five, you know. Um, Clips falls into a lot of people's top one. True. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, you know what? A lot of people don't know that after Clips battled Tay Rock, after Clips battled Tay Rock, the first time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the first time. He, you know, he stopped. 
he stopped battling. Uh, I think you know his music thing was really happening. I wanted, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted Charlie Clips to come back. I, I was the first, back. I, I was the first person who challenged Charlie Clips after. You know what I'm saying? After he left, or I was one of the first people. I can't, you know, I don't know if I was the first, but I was one of, you know what I'm saying, the first people. Like I wanted Clips to come back, and I wanted to be. I wanted to be, you know, battle. his comeback you know, battle. I, I kind of so you know, I, I had kind of, I had kind of been egging him on for years, you know, you know, respectfully, because you know that's my man. But you know, I, had, you know, I kind of been egging him when he came back and like blew up, like he just became like he looked unstoppable. He looked fucking unstoppable. You know, it was a thing. We have such a mutual respect that, uh, that you know, he accepted, he accepted the offer from uh, my man Quest McCody and everybody at uh, Barbarian Battlegrounds to come here. And do a one rounder with it, you know what I'm saying? And I think it, I think it looks, I think it came out really fucking dope. You know what I'm saying? So I'm very appreciative for that. I love the look. You know what I'm saying? Win or lose, win or lose, it's a good battle. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Shouts to clips. Um. So yeah, musical wise, do you have any projects, plans for the future? Um. Do you have any uh, things out that you want uh, people to go to? Is there any places where people can find your previous projects and stuff? Yeah, man, you can go to uh, www.marvwonder.bandcamp.com and get my entire fucking catalog. I make really good music, you know what I'm saying? I'm one of the battle rappers who makes really good fucking music, and I appreciate all support, you know what I'm saying, that I get. I'm currently uh, finishing up uh, this EP that I'm working on in between battles. The music has always been the main focus. The battle was just always the icing on the cake. So I love making music. That's my that's my that's my number one thing. So and I'm I'm really good at it. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's all man. I just want people, you know, love me or hate me, man. Just 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 respect what I do. That's all. I'm not, you know I don't gotta be in your top five. I don't gotta be in your top five. Although I should but you know I ain't I ain't really tripping. Fuck it, cause I can I can beat I can beat basically everybody in everybody's top five. Okay. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. All right, if you could call out three battlers right now, who would you call out? I don't know. I'm, I've never been a call out guy. Like I've always thought that was, I always thought that was a little WWF. You know what I'm saying? Like if it makes sense, like if it makes sense, then it makes. Like there isn't anybody that I'm like dying to battle. You know what I'm saying? Like I respect everybody who doesn't, and you know I love a good challenge. So, like I, I don't, I don't think I, would, like, I, don't, I don't think I would call anybody out. All right. So, who was your top battler of 2014? Who do you think was the best battler of the whole year? Uh, Big, Big K. K. All right. Um. So, what's your what's your opinion on Big K? How how do you? Uh, I mean, what do you like about Big K? I I, I think Big K is, is he's really witty and he's really direct, right to the point. You know what I'm saying? There's no there's no fluff in his shit. And he does. He he rarely gets rattled. You know what I'm saying? I like Big K a lot. I like Big K a lot. Like I think Big K had the best year in battling last year. You know what I'm saying? You could you could say that Daylight had an incredible year last year. You could say that Danny Myers had an incredible year last year too. But I think Big K is the standout for me. All right. Okay. Um, a lot of people think that Tay Rock was or his comeback into battling has been incredible. Um. How do you feel his comeback in battling has been? I mean, it's got to go down as one of the best comebacks for any battler, really, uh, besides yourself. Um, you know, for being out of the game for so long to come back and to really adapt to the new wave of battling that's you know currently going on. Uh, what do you think of Tay Rock? Um, I think I think Tay Rock is cool, man. I think I think Tay Rock is really consistent. You know what I'm saying? I think I think that I mean people give him shit, but he he's really. He's really, he really only has one clear loss. You know what I'm saying? And it was early in his career, and ever since then he's arguably been undefeated. So you gotta respect that. You know what I'm saying? Tay Rock may not be for everybody. You know what I'm saying? He may not wow everybody, but you know what you're gonna get. You know what you're gonna get when you when you click on a Tay Rock battle. So for that you gotta salute him. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, 2014 was a really big year for battling. Um, you know, we had the Ether event, uh, which, you know, was the one of the biggest PPVs, or if not the biggest PPV for battling ever. Um, where do you see mm. battling going? 
I mean, because right now we've had a reality TV series, we've had pay-per-views, you know, it's getting incredible airtime and incredible attention from notable people who can make things happen in battling. Where do you see battling going? I actually wanted to scale back. I wanted, I wanted, I wanted to fall back a little bit. I think um, if it gets too big, too fast, that it's gonna, it's gonna implode. And I kind of think that's where we're at right now. I, you know, we're on the verge of that. So I kind of wanna, I kind of want, I kind of want these league owners, you know what I'm saying, and and, and investors, man, to kind of pull back. Because you know it'll become too commercial and then we'll lose it. We already saw it. We, we saw it happen with hip hop in general. Battling is like the last pure form of of, of mm -hmm. fucking hip hop. So I don't want it to become too watered down. I think um I think these super duper big events, although they're cool to to bring to bring people in who don't necessarily know about battling, that's cool. But I think that it alienates the core fan. You know what I'm saying? And you don't want to do that. You don't, you don't want to do that. You don't want to lose a person that actually knows, that actually knows and, and breathes battle rap because you want to make a couple dollars and you got fucking people from the late 90s or, you know what I'm saying, early 2000s battling that haven't made a splash in fucking hip hop since. Like, that's what I'm scared of. You know what I'm saying? I kind of see it. It's, 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 I just don't want it to burn out too fast. So I want it to. So I wanted to scale back a little bit. I wanted to get back. I wanted to get back to to breaking new talent. MC is actually caring about rapping. You know, not necessarily getting a huge check. Okay. Um. So you know, over the last couple of years, we've seen people like Cannabis. Um. We've seen cats like Cassidy, Joe Budden, all these guys come back who are industry cats. And uh, I mean, what is your opinion on the recent influx of rappers? Um, that are known for their mainstream success coming into battling. I mean, do you think it's good? Do you think it's? I mean, yeah. What do you think? What do you feel? Uh, I think it's. I mean, I'm not gonna take. I mean, I'm not gonna take anything away from you guys because I'm, you know I'm quite sure we all have similar stories. We all started fucking battling. Fucking battling. You know what I'm saying? Like we all started battling. Just because the type of success doesn't necessarily mean that you change as an MC. The only thing I say is the way battling is now isn't necessarily the way it was when a lot of these people were battling. So if they can't adapt, like if they can't adapt, then I don't want to see them. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't, I don't want them to rap the way they did when they were battling in fucking 97, 98. Because that's not going to be entertaining to me. And you're going to get one of these young boys that knows how to battle right now for this crowd right now, and he's going to destroy him. So I have no problem with it, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just they have to understand that they have to understand that every that people are going to be more critical of them than they will be of a person who consistently does it right now. Okay. All right. Um, you watched Disaster vs. Cassidy? I you haven't. haven't watched Disaster vs. Cassidy. Okay. Well, um. Cassidy was reported to be getting a quarter of a million dollars for that battle. Um, how do you feel about, you know, big money being thrown out like this? I mean, how, yeah, I mean, I know you've already expressed how you feel that Battle Rap needs to, like, sort of take a step back. I mean, what do you think about the incredible money that's just being thrown around in battle? I mean, it's, it's a double-edged sword. I'm very, I'm very happy that our ceiling is being raised, but I'm also, but very, mindful I'm also very mindful of the fact that everybody isn't gonna everybody isn't gonna get that. So, so I think it I think it, 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 it raises people's expectations to a to a, to a asinine point. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? so if, if if I'm fucking if I'm fucking if I'm fucking loaded luck, loaded luck and I hear that you just paid a nigga who doesn't do this a quarter million of a dollar, quarter million dollars, and I do this, and I'm one of the most popular niggas. Well, guess what? Now I need 150,000, or I'm never battling again. And that affects the fan. That keeps the fan from seeing a person who's really good at this, who does this now, who they want to see. You see what I'm saying? So that's that that I'm happy that somebody can get it, but the reality that everybody can't get it, I know that that's going to negatively affect our culture. Do you prefer a cappella battles or do you prefer you know battles over beats? Well, right now, I, right now I don't like battles over beats because a lot of a lot of people who battle aren't rappers, so they don't know how to ride a beat, and it's not enjoyable. Okay. 
Alright. Um, have you battled over beats before? Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. Do you think it's more challenging than acapella battle? Definitely, because if you because it, it it gives an added element. Like if you don't know how to ride a beat and you sound terrible over that beat, nobody's gonna hear that punchline you spit because you're gonna say it so terrible. Who would you say is in your top three battlers at the current moment? Who would you say is in your top three if you have a top three of uh, battlers? Top three. Um, my top three battlers would probably be Big K, Daylight, and uh, Charlie Clips. Okay, all right. Uh, Daylight's been really blown up over the last few years. You know, um, a lot of people attribute that to his antics. Do you believe that he is a great showman? I mean, what do you think makes Daylight so special? Because you never know what you're gonna get. Everybody knows. He can Everybody rap. knows he can rap. Everybody knows Daylight. Everybody knows Daylight. Pin the pad is probably one of the best. One of the best writers and performers. You know that we've seen. But you don't know if he's gonna show up. Without a head, he's gonna show up dressed like a clan member, or if he's gonna show up, you know, you know, like Keanu Reeves in the fucking Matrix, you don't know, and that's his, you know, what I'm saying that's his draw. So he's, you know, he's perfected. So he's, you know, he's perfected it. He's definitely perfected it. I respect what he's done. You know, what I'm saying a lot of people think he's an idiot, but I know he's a genius because people are talking because people are talking about him now. If he was just a regular rapper, nobody would care. And you know. I respect it, you know, sometimes, some things I think are a little overboard, but, you know, that's just my own personal taste, you know, so be it, man, whatever, whatever, whatever puts him in a better position to provide for his family, you know, who am I to knock it? Would you consider battling him in the future? I mean, would you, do you think you'd be able to, I mean, I know you'd, you think you'd be able to take him, but, um, would you be prepared for his antics, whatever he may pop up with on the night? Do, I mean, do, do you think you'd be able to handle, uh, you know, because, you know, he's obviously done some real crazy things on stage, like, you know, gotten butt naked, you know, um, twerked on people, you know, would you, would, do you think you'd be able to handle those type of antics on a stage? I fuck day later. <laughs> you know it. I fuck day up. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, that's my man too. Like, you know, I fuck day over. Like, for real, for real. <laughs> so if daylight tried twerking on him, you'd push him off stage. Man, look, man. Man, look, man. Here's the, I'm not gonna get rattled, bro. I don't get rattled. Like, it's just. Like, it's just I'm, 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 not I'm, I'm, I'm not that impressed. I'm, I'm, I, I, wouldn't I'm, I, I, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be fucked up by it. They like no, I fuck them up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Um, so. 2015 is now upon us. Um, do you have any battles which you've already got scheduled coming up? Um, not yet. I mean, I'm doing a. I got a, I'm doing mm, Blackout 5. Big event. Big, big yeah, card. Yeah, in a couple weeks. In a couple weeks. I got to find out who I'm battling. Oh, so you don't know who you're battling yet? No, 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 not yet. No, 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 not yet. Whoa. Okay, that adds an interesting element to it. How are you pre meant to, you know, write and prepare for, you know, a battle if you don't know who you're battling? Mm, you kind of write, you kind of write for everybody. Okay, all right. Um, Blackout 5's got incredible names on the card, you know. There's a lot of return of a lot of people. Um... Do you think it's great what's happening with battling, bringing back some of the people that, you know, were in beforehand? I mean, I know yourself, you came back from a hiatus. Um, do you feel that it's something that should be happening more often, or do you think that we should be looking towards the youth as a new generation of cats to come through? Well, I, th I, th I, think, the young I think the younger guys are hungrier. I think they're more innovative. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think a lot of them are stars. You know, I think I think a lot of them are just good rappers, and they haven't learned how to they haven't learned how to be stars yet. So you're still gonna need you're still gonna need the older generation the older generation to teach them how to be stars. So I think I think so I think I think I think it's a mix. I think it's a mix of of of, of both. You need both. Okay. Uh, do you have a favorite bar which you've ever said to anyone in about? Hmm. I haven't said it yet. Okay. Do you have a bar which someone said to you which you think, or you know you have to take your hat off and say, okay, that was actually pretty good. Hell no, these niggas be what? I'm be listening to them. Man. Um, nah, 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 I'm joking. Um, no, I don't know, man. I think you know, I don't think I've ever battled anybody. You know what I'm saying? Whack. So they've all said something. I don't, I don't know if any of 
has really hit me to the point where I, w where I would remember it after the battle, though. Thanks for having this interview with us. Um, it's really good to hear from someone who's you know been in the game for so long and seen it develop over the years and how it's transitioned from being a thing which people did you know just for fun maybe on a street corner to becoming something which is like you know worldwide now with battle leagues sprouting up all over the place would you uh consider battling over here in the uk yeah i would love to actually i would love to i want to uh i want to battle uh i want to battle uh joker star over joker star fluke b you think uh, that would be a great battle for you yeah yeah i definitely think that would be entertaining as shit yeah joker star's a good guy i like him Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, has anyone ever contacted you uh, with regards to coming out here yet so far? Not to battle him. Not to battle him. I know uh, me and Quest. Me and Quest were just out there last year to uh, battle uh, Marlo and uh, Shuffle. 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 Yeah. Shuffle. No, yeah. Mar Marlo and Shuffle T. Yeah. So uh, yeah, um, you've you've been don't flop before. What what do you? Uh, what's your opinions on don't flop? You know. I love don't. I, lo I love don't flop, man. It's a good lead. Great people. You know what I'm saying? And the pints are always flowing. So I'm <laughs> cool. That's great to hear. Well, um, like I said before, thank you for coming and, and uh, you know, just pulling through and having this interview with me. Uh, it means a lot, uh, personally, as a fan. And, um, yeah, I mean, future projects and everything, you should be able to find that at your site again, if you just want to repeat that for the people. It's a... Uh, marvwonder.bandcamp marvwonder.bandcamp.com you know what I'm saying so I want people to I want people to go check that music out it's a lot different from the battle so I just want them to check that out that's my main goal that's, that's my goal that's, that's my goal alright man well uh, thanks for coming through for this interview I appreciate you having me bro um, yeah I mean I guess uh, we'll see you soon we'll see who you're battling at uh, Blackout 5 good luck for that battle um, whoever you're battling. Thank you, thank you. And uh, I'm no doubt, I'm sure it'll be, you know, another great classic. And another one to just add to the stack of many, many battles that you've had over the years, man. So, uh, good luck with that. Man, thank you, boss. I appreciate right, it. man. Well, uh, thanks. Thanks for that interview, man. So, hey, guys. Thanks for watching that. That was my uh, interview with the legendary Marv1. If you uh, enjoyed this interview... Please share it with others. Let people know that uh, I put this up. Uh, if it was good enough to deserve your like, please go ahead and give it that like. And uh, as always, you know, subscribe because I will be producing more of these interviews with people uh, who are in the battle scene and everything like that. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'm going to catch you guys later, man. Peace.